Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So, I'm sure my global mains out there can agree that the game has been a little bit dry recently. You know, there hasn't been a lot to do, there aren't a lot of events that grind right now, and we're just kind of waiting for the next campaign to start. Now, the good news is that we are only about a week away from the next global campaign, so in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick preview of all the new uh, units, awakenings, and a couple new events that we can expect to see for this next campaign. Alright, so with all that said, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing we'll start with is the next Dokkan Fest banner, the next summonable unit on Global, which is most likely going to be this STR transforming Bojack you see on the screen right now. Now, of course, it's not confirmed. It's not guaranteed. We don't have the in-game news or preview yet but there is a i would say 95 percent chance it's gonna be this guy he's the only one that makes sense unless they decide to drop like a random global first unit out of nowhere i guess it's possible but i really don't see that happening so yeah like i said it's most likely gonna be this bojack and i know bojack as a character is a little bit polarizing, let's say. You know, like some people love him, some people hate him, and I think most people are just kind of indifferent, they don't really care that much about him, and I've heard many people tell me that they are planning to skip the Bojack banner. And to me, I think Bojack is just an okay character, he's an okay villain, I don't really love him that much, but I do believe that the unit, you know, this specific Bojack, is pretty awesome. He's a very powerful unit with some dope animations, uh, great support, good leader skill, you know, just a lot of stuff going for this guy. Uh, he's drawn a lot of comparisons to the STR Transforming Cooler, and that's definitely not a bad thing, you know. So I am looking forward to this release, I would say. I'm not going to go too crazy on his banner. If I don't pull him within like 500-ish stones, I'll probably give up. But uh, I do definitely want him. So yeah, he's going to be the next Dokkan Fest unit on Global. His banner will also include a new Zhangnya, who is pretty decent. And uh, here's the rest of the banner. Now, I know for a fact that this dude will be replaced, which is unfortunate because obviously he was one of the highlights on the JP banner, right? But he was just featured on the End Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta banner. So there is basically a 0% chance they're going to feature him back to back like that. I mean, I guess there's a tiny chance, maybe it's like 5%, but just based on the trend, uh, they're most likely going to replace him with somebody else. And the rest of the banner was not bad, you know, like Bardock is amazing, this guy's still pretty good, this guy's really good, this guy's okay, he's I think a little bit underrated, but um, you know, it wasn't the best Dokkan Fest banner, but it wasn't the worst either. I would say it's just an okay banner overall. And depending on, you know, who they replace him with, it could make the banner a little bit better or a little bit worse. I mean, uh, if they put the Fizz, Angel, Golden, Frieza in place of Gohan, I'm not saying Frieza is necessarily better than Gohan, but he is newer and he is really, really damn good. So I think a lot of people would be pretty happy about that. So We'll have to see, but uh, yeah, there's the Bojack banner, and we also should be getting a very highly anticipated Extreme Z Awakening, which is the one for Int Super Gogeta. Now, the reason I think that is because, you know, when JP got Bojack, they also got this Extreme Z battle event and the Extreme Z Awakening for Gogeta, so it would just make sense. Obviously, it's global, so we can't say for sure. They could give us, you know, another EZA that uh, we're still currently missing, like the Janemba one, but I mean, I hope for global sake that they just keep the exact same schedule and give us Gogeta right now, because global needs something a little bit hype right now. Like, we had the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which was, you know, pretty hype, and then we had Turles, which was just okay, and we haven't had a really exciting new event or Extreme Z Awakening on global in a while, so I think Gogeta would be perfect for right now, just to kind of lift the spirits of the global player base a bit. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, Janemba right now wouldn't even make sense because 
I'm pretty sure they released his EZA during the the Nemba and PyCon Dual Dokkan Fest, so they have to keep it for that celebration. So yeah, it's most likely gonna be Gogeta, and this EZA is... I mean, it's crazy. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal EZA. I wouldn't say it's better, in my opinion, than the Fizz Vegito Blue, but it's definitely one of the best Extreme Z Awakenings in the game. So for those of you that have Int Gogeta, which should be most of you, um, definitely look forward to that, all right? And uh, the other major event we can expect to see would be a new uh, chain battle, or no, sorry, not chain battle, a new ultimate clash, which I guess was to be expected because it does reset every single month, right? And in terms of chain battle, since we have one ongoing on global right now, even though JP did get a brand new chain battle, I believe, for their Bojack campaign, we're probably not going to get another one within the next few weeks. So uh, yeah, there you go guys. That pretty much does it for the new banner and events. I know it's not a lot. I know that it's still not a ton of content, but I kind of see this as more of a mini or like mid tier celebration because we do have the Saiyan Day celebration happening in the middle of March. So that should be pretty big. It's going to be a joint celebration with Global and JP, so that's definitely the one that I'm much more excited about. And uh, yeah, before we go, let's quickly check out the details for the upcoming new units, as well as the Awakenings for two older free-to-play units, the AGL Whis and the uh, Fizz Hatchiak from the Hero Extermination event. So why don't we go back to the Bojack first. His leader skill is Space Traveling Warriors, Category Q plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 170%, or Time Travelers, Category Q plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 150%. Super Attack raises Attack and Defense for one turn and causes immense damage. And Passive is Attack and Defense plus 100%, Space Traveling Warriors, Category Allies, Q plus 2, Attack and Defense plus 30% when facing one or more enemies. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% when facing two or more enemies. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% when facing three or more enemies. So essentially, if you're facing at least three enemies, then he's giving this uh, space traveling warriors category key plus two attack and defense plus 50% as the support passive. His active skill is a transformation, and it can be activated when facing only one enemy, starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle once only, which is definitely not a bad condition by any means. And his links are the Hera Clan, Galactic Warriors, Big Bad Bosses, Thirst for Conquest, Coward, Revival, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Resurrected Warriors, Movie Bosses, Full Power, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, Terrifying Conquerors, and Human Deeds, and Space Traveling Warriors. Now popping over to the Full Power Bojack, his uh, super attack raises attack, and this can be stacked infinitely causes immense damage, and his passive is Q plus 3, attack and defense plus 180%, launches an additional attack. That is a medium chance of becoming a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 30%, and defense plus 15%. When attacking with 3 or more key spheres obtained, plus an additional attack plus 30%, and defense plus 15%, when attacking with 6 or more key spheres obtained. And his links stay the same, categories of course stay exactly the same, and that is the STR Transforming Bojack. I think it's pretty obvious why he draws a lot of comparisons to the uh, STR Transforming Cooler. And uh, while I don't think he's as versatile as the Cooler, um, his attack and defense, I mean, are pretty comparable, and he's just a very, very good unit, you know? And even though I'm not the biggest Bojack fan out there, um, I have to admit that this guy is an absolute monster, and if you guys have LR Bojack in your box and you haven't used him a ton, this guy will definitely give you a reason to run him because he is by far LR Bojack's best linking partner. Okay, so that is the STR Bojack. Uh, quickly looking at the Zhongnya here, her leader skill is going to be Space Traveling Warriors Category Key Plus 3, HP Attack and Defense Plus 100. And 20%. Super attack, supreme damage, and lowers attack and defense. And passive is attack and defense plus 30% per space traveling warriors category ally on the team. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when there is an ally whose name includes Bojack. Attacking on the same turn. 
and attacked enemies attack and defense minus 20% recovers 10% HP. At the start of the turn, links are the Hera Clan, Galactic Warriors, Battlefield Diva, Brutal Beatdown, Revival, Shocking Speed, and Fierce Battle. The categories are Peppy Gals, Resurrected Warriors, Time Travelers, Terrifying Conquerors, and Space Traveling Warriors. So, not too much to say here about the Zhangya. Um, she's she's a good unit, a good side unit for sure. We've seen better, but um, regardless, I'm always happy to see you know new versions of characters that don't get a lot of love, right? So a new Zhangya is always a good thing. And lastly, before we go, we have the two free to play awakenings, and uh, this one awakens from this Whis, like I said, from the Hero Extermination event. And it's uh, been a long time coming, you know, because both these guys, like the the Whis and this dude right here, were originally released back in, I believe, 2016. Yeah, I think it was 2016, and now it's 2021. I mean, I guess it was 2020 when they awaken on JP, but um, on global, it's going to be, you know, in 2021 that they awaken. So basically five years in between, which is pretty crazy. But uh, starting with the Whis here, with his Awakening, his leader skill is going to be HL Type Q plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 50%, Super Attack, Supreme Damage, and a medium chance of stunning the enemy, and Passive is Q plus 2 and Defense plus 100%, plus an additional Defense plus 20%, with each attack performed up to 100%, high chance of launching an additional Super Attack, and fully recovers HP, and great chance of evading enemies' attacks, including Super Attacks, when HP is 30% or less, once only. Links are Godly Power, Shocking Speed, Connoisseur, uh, Gentleman, Brainiacs, Cold Judgment, and Shattering the Limit, and categories are Realm of Gods, Siblings Bond, Bond of Master and Disciple, and Space Traveling Warriors. And because his additional defense boosts are calculated separately, he actually gets a total boost of defense plus 300% after performing 5 attacks. So. Yeah, this Whis, from a defensive perspective, is extremely, extremely good. And then we have this dude right here, Leader Skill, All Types, Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 30%, raises attack for one turn and causes supreme damage, and passive is Attack and Defense plus 60%, plus an additional Attack and Defense plus 30%, up to 90% at the start of each turn when there is a Pure Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans category enemy, and recovers 40% HP at the end of turn when delivering the final blow. His links are Hatred of Saints, Berserker, Toughest Nails, Big Bad Bosses, Infighter, Fear and Faith, and Shattering the Limit. And categories are Artificial Life Forms, Revenge, and Crossover. So yeah, that does it for today's video guys. Two free to play awakenings, two new summonable units, one new Extreme Z Awakening, Ultimate Clash, and uh, that's all there is to talk about. I mean, there could be maybe one or two surprises that get announced during the uh, BoJack campaign, but I highly doubt it. Oh, we should probably get um, Dokkan Fest tickets in the Pilafs Trove for BoJack's banner. But of course, that is only for you know players who spend money on the game. So if you're free to play, then don't worry about it. And, um, you know, like I said, guys, Saiyan Day is coming in the middle of March. That should be a pretty you know, exciting, pretty hype celebration for both sides. And a lot of people are speculating it's going to be a uh, new Super Saiyan God Goku. That's the uh, Saiyan Day unit this year, which would be pretty awesome, in my opinion. I mean, we haven't had a new uh, God Goku in a little while. I think the LR God Goku was the last one. And if we get a new one for Saiyan Day, that's totally cool with me. Um, I'm always down for another Super Saiyan God Goku, so that should be... Uh, pretty fun and uh, yeah guys that is today's video thank you so much for watching i really hope my you know global mains out there are excited for the bojack campaign and if not then at the very least like i said man saiyan day is right around the corner so uh yeah that's it thank you once again for watching you guys are amazing as always if you liked today's video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and you like what you see then definitely hit that big red subscribe button join this tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media
signing out.